Hello, and in this video, I would like to talk about this little camera. It's the Pentax Q. It's the very first generation, well, it's the original model of the Pentax Q digital version. And uh, it's actually a really, really small mirrorless camera, as you can change the lens. And nowadays, you can get it for a really, really low price. In Germany, I think you can get it for around 150 euros or even less second hand in mint condition. And the reason why I want to talk about this camera today is because I would like to launch a new video, well, a new series of video on my YouTube channel about how to take better pictures with, well, at least good pictures, with um, cheap cameras. So I'll be using cheap DSLRs, cheap mirrorless cameras like these ones, and um, some phone cameras as well as some compact cameras. So I would like to just do some reviews of these little cameras that I got recently. Well, I have this one since 2011, but um, I bought some more cheap cameras for the series of video and it's still in the process of being filmed and being edited and everything, but before this series are launched, um, I would like to actually talk about these cameras. So um, this particular camera is obviously a mirrorless camera, but um, it has a really nice build quality to it. So it's almost entirely made out of metal, even the flap has metal um, parts in it. Otherwise, the skeleton of it is also metal. It has a normal hot shoe, which is something that's rare to see on little cameras. Even most of the smaller mirrorless cameras does not include the hot shoe, or at least not the um, standard hot shoe. Yeah, and because the sensor size is a really, really small sensor size. It's like a sensor size of a normal compact camera. Unless if it's the more premium compact camera nowadays, where it's starting to get bigger and bigger, then, you know, this is still small. That said, the quality of this sensor is still quite decent. Um, sure, you cannot make something like a billboard size image out of it. You can try, but it'll be really blurry. And uh, the lens, well, the optic quality from, well, I only tested two optics, well, two lenses from Pentax, really. Um, the the first one being the um, the 8mm, that's an equivalent of the 47mm, um, like 235 full frame equivalent. And this is this one right here. It's it has the aperture of f1.9, yeah, but it's 8.5 millimeters, sorry. And uh, the filter thread is 40.5 millimeter, so it is a really small lens. That said, though, um, they both has really, really nice build quality to it. So, yeah, unlike other kit lenses that you get with DSLRs, like, you know, the, the zoom ring, it's pretty smooth, as well as the focus ring and everything. And you have some buttons where you can still customize to do certain things, such as there's dial in front of the camera where you can actually set it to do certain things, such as if you want different filters or different ND filters, things like that, and you can set it to other modes as well. And the filters can, like most of the time, it will also be applied to, well, it's able to be applied to the video, which I'll be, like, which I'll talk in a minute. Um, yeah, so as of the build quality, it's actually quite good. The battery life is not that good though. Like, you can kind of get through a day shooting with this if you're not going to shoot a lot. But if you're taking pictures of like literally everything, like say you're going to a new country, like a totally new country, and you want to pho photograph everything, you know, then you might want to take more than one battery for even one day shoot. But if you're just going to be a casual... Um, photographer taking pictures here and there. One battery will last you probably a day, maximum a day and a half. Uh, and it also accepts SD cards here, so it's actually a really amazing package, I think, because I mean, it already eats up a lot of space with the battery and with the um, SD card. And uh, there's the proper lens release over here. Um, and beneath the camera, there's the mini. HDMI port and the PC or AV 
um, port. It shares the same port. And being a small camera, um, obviously when you mount your tripod plate here, like when you mount your tripod here, it will shut these two ports completely, but that doesn't really matter um, that much. I mean, who's going to be buying this camera and mounting it on a tripod and then plug in, let's say, a monitor up here to see what's the camera seeing? I don't think that there, like, there are many people who will do that. And it's good that the SD card is over here, as some of the um, cheaper um, mirrorless cameras, um, some of the, well, many of the compact cameras, as well as uh, as well as the um, cheaper low-end DSLRs, are starting to put their SD card port down here. So it's pretty good seeing that they did not compromise on that. And there's still a full um, mode dial as well as a dial here to dial your settings, which is pretty nice. Um, the screen itself, what I figured out is that it's not always showing the proper exposure, even though you have it on exposure simulation. Like sometimes you'll get a brighter color or sometimes you'll get a darker image than what the screen showed you and uh, the funny thing is I think it's to do with the processor and the sensor as well when you have it on preview mode like live view mode um, the image that you're seeing back here looks so well it I would not say it looks so unsharp but it just looks a little bit blurry it could be a little bit sharper but then after you take the picture and then when you zoom into the picture it looks sharp so you know just just be sure sometimes you actually miss the focus but sometimes you have that thinking that you missed the focus but because of the screen and the processor that's not processing the image fast enough you think that um, you just missed the focus but in real like in reality you did not so yeah and um, talking about the focusing system here it's not great, not that great. In low light, well, I don't need to even go in super low light, just maybe even indoor what, on a sunny day and just have a window and some lights open, uh, sorry, some lights turned on, uh, you will already experience some um, slow focusing. And outdoor, even on a bright sunny day, it will take quite a few seconds to actually focus. At least with the lenses that I own right now, which is the 5 to 15, which is probably like 28, like starting from 28 millimeters on. Um, yeah, 28 to, I don't know, 70? Anyway, <laughs> I'm not sure about the exact maths and sensor size that I should be calculating from this. Um, yeah, and as well as my. Uh, 8.5 millimeters so these two lenses from my experience they focus really really slowly but it also depends on like on the actual chip inside the camera how fast it would drive the lens yep and uh, moving on to the video and image quality um, I will be talking more detail when I switch to my screen um, but for now what I can say about the <clears throat> what I can say about the video and image quality is if you're planning to use filters it will degrade the um, sharpness of your videos and pictures dramatically as well as dynamic range and when you shoot raw just like any other camera when you shoot raw the images will be a bit flatter than JPEGs so obviously it needs to try to hold up that dynamic range and put that like the maximum um, amount of detail into the image so that you can retrieve certain detail later. That said, the files, it's okay if you're just going to put it on Facebook, Instagram, things like that, but you're not going to be doing any commercial work with it because you cannot recover a lot of um, information with the files. It's, it's okay for social media and that's pretty much it 
and uh, as of photos, I mean as of videos, obviously you cannot shoot raw with these kind of cameras, at least not yet anyway, but um, <clears throat> I think the video part, it's like, it's okay for family videos, but you'll not be able to do anything professionally with it, it takes 1080p videos, which is amazing considering that it was launched back in 2011, that was the era of the 5D Mark II for Full HD, so it was nice of them to include Full HD video in here, but I have to mention that it's not sharp, like, it's okay for um, family videos, so yeah, and that's probably another reason why you want to buy this camera is because of the size, like, it's small enough that even if you take it on the family um, videos, like, if you take it on your family trip, sorry, um, if you have all the right lenses for it, it's not going to be, like, a big hassle to carry this setup around, because you still get all your manual controls. There's even an intervalometer on here to do your time lapse, which is amazing. So, as long as if you just get this camera, get all the lenses that you need, let's say an ultra-wide or a telephoto lens for this one, and maybe go on a trip with your family, this camera will be a great camera. Sure, it's around 10 megapixels, but, you know, if you're, all you're gonna be displaying is pretty much an A3 print, or putting on Facebook or other social media, it's okay. It's, it's really just fine. Um, no joke. It's perfectly fine. And because of all the manual settings, you still can mess around with other um, settings such as your white balance, shutter speed, aperture, and everything else. Which is pretty cool. Um, the menu system to navigate in this camera, if you're familiar with Pentax menus, then you'll not get lost. But um, for other people, you will not get lost, but you'll find that the menu system is... It reminds me of the older um, computers from like the 90s. So it's it has a really, really simple, plain layout. It's logically laid out, but it's just really plain. It's nothing fancy like Canon, Nikon... Well, Canon, Nikon menus. I was about to say Sony, but then again, Sony menus is... Graphically, it's okay, but logically, there's no logic in the Sony menus, just just saying. They improved a lot for the past five years in their menus, but I don't know. It doesn't have any logic still. So it's one of the reasons, I, it's one of the smaller reasons I don't buy Sony stuff yet. But yeah, that's about it. So now let me just switch over to the screen and explain more about the, um, well, more in depth about the photos and videos part. Um, <clears throat> wait, uh, one more thing about the video. Um, it's like the file, if you want to do heavy color grading and ha heavy color editing with it, it's... I think the files are not rugged, well, are not robust enough to do that. Photography-wise, it's okay. It's still not as robust as, say, traditional DSLR since the past five years, but it will get you somewhere. Whereas the video, it's like you only want to make home videos with it. That's pretty much it. Um, otherwise, everything is okay about this camera. It's affordable. You can even get two or three of these cameras and maybe do YouTube videos from different angles with this camera because it still can deliver such an amazing quality with this um, camera. Yep, so now I'll switch over to my screen to talk more about photos. Uh, as my roommate, as I'm staying in the dormitory because I'm a student, um, just got back and he's making some noise, so I'll need to switch now. Okay, so these are the um, sample pictures that I picked. It's put on Lightroom. Some of the pictures are shot in RAW, and the type of file that it gives is the DNG RAW, so it's actually a really flexible file to work with. Um, 
So if we just look through, um, I shot some in low light, I shot some with higher ISOs down here. Some of them are JPEGs and some of them are RAW, so just for you to see the difference between these files. Um, so let's work with this file in the beginning. So you can see that most of the things, well most of the image is, well, a little bit overexposed according to the histogram. So here, as long as we have everything in the histogram, this is pretty much how much we can kind of pull things. That's a little bit too much, so I just put it down and raise that up. So you can see that um, the sensor is really holding it up for a small size sensor. It is sharp, but it's not as sharp as, say, a DSLR level. I mean, this is a compact camera sensor, pretty much. So to get this much detail, and mind you, this is the um, the IMAX screen, 27-inch, 27 zooming at 1 to 1, so you're bound to see some smudges here and there. <clears throat> yeah, raise up the blue, the color still holding itself. It doesn't show a lot of noise yet. Well, ISO 125, it's okay. Um, lens profile correction. Like that. It's kind of okay. I mean, this is pretty much good enough to, um, if I adjust this a little higher with the Kelvin temperature. This is pretty much good enough to put on Instagram or Facebook, things like that. Or even to do the print for like an A4 print or an A3 print maximum. It's okay. Um, if we go here, this is definitely raw because it's a bit flat. Uh, see, like, you know, there are no details in the sky, even like sorry, in the clouds. Even if I pull it back, and even if it's still saying that it handles everything in the histogram, the sky, you know, well, the clouds, I pretty much lose most of its detail, or well, pretty much all of its detail, really. Um, raise that up, and yeah, it's it's okay. I think if I would publish this on. Um, Instagram or other social network. <clears throat> now let's move actually further in. Nope, I'm still using this. Anyway, um, let's talk about skin tone. The skin tone on this camera is okay. It's not really accurate, but it's not bad by any means. It's actually pretty good for a compact size sensor well, compact camera size sensor. And you can see the detail here, it's even sharper than the image that I showed you before, but yeah. I think it's just okay for, you know, normal use. But let's see what we can do with the file. I can kind of get some detail of the clouds here, but um, shadows, what I can do, oh, okay, need to go that far. Um, <clears throat> okay, is it falling apart yet? Almost. So, the sharpness still remains, obviously. <laughs> uh, but yeah. But you do start to see some of the noise that's coming out from this area as I boost the shadows up quite a bit. Now let's go to the shots from indoor. This was shot on the 8.5mm 0.1 standard kit lens and you can see that for this lens like f as a kit lens it's actually a really really sharp lens. We're still at ISO 125 a tenth of a second, so it's you shouldn't be photographing a tenth of a second at 50 millimeters, roughly equivalent from of 50 millimeters. But um, <clears throat> I just wanted to show that okay, the 
image stabilization from the camera and um, <clears throat> um, the sharpness of the lens actually holds it pretty well. I mean, this is a really, really sharp image. But um, in this lighting, it's kind of hard to tweak the information, especially when I shot it at JPEG. So, yeah. Maybe it was too much with the yellow. More magenta would be okay. More purple. The magenta. Yeah, um, I mean, this is totally a nice image. But that said, these are shot pretty much with JPEG, so the color will look more saturated than um, the more dull looking raw. Uh, let's see, if we go here with ISO 1250, you can start seeing that, you know, it's pretty much smudgy, as well as this one. If I were to lower down the highlights, I can kind of recover a lot of the detail here, but I also lost a lot of detail here as it shows in the histogram. <clears throat> um, but you can see that from the ISO 1250, you know, you lose a lot of detail. Like, this was shot on daylight, and just look at how much detail you lose. Like, you, you know that that's a tree, you know that that's a building, but, it, it, like, the lines, it's, it looks like a painting and if I was just go here and look at this detail and the sharpness at ISO 125 so yeah it's still quite sharp I would say this is just blurry but obviously an image as a whole it's quite sharp but this is um Another image that was shot with a RAW version. This was JPEG and this was RAW. The reason why I switch um, in this situation is not only because I wanted to show you how it looks like between these two images, but also um, the f like I wanted to talk about the fact that if you shoot RAW, like one picture requires such a long time for the camera to process that like if you are planning to shoot some decisive moment, just don't go for raw. Because if you miss it, you'll be waiting for a while, and by the time the camera finish um, its buffer, the decisive moment is probably gone already. But yeah, that's about it. Oops, that's too much. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's about it really, regarding the image quality of the camera. Pretty smudgy at ISO 1250. I mean, okay, you probably will not be shooting at this ISO during this time of the day anyway, but just to show you guys... <clears throat> yeah. But low light, at low ISO, it still retains its detail pretty nicely. Because I was shooting at f1.9 over here, this 15 is not really sharp, but you still can see the box and everything. That's one difference shooting with a smaller sensor is that even though it's not sharp, you know the object. But if you're shooting, let's say, 1.8 with a full frame, you know, if you focus over there and this, you still know that it's this. It's like the cutlery holder, but it will be a bit more blurry. Well, a lot more blurry, in fact. But yeah, that's pretty much the review of this camera and that was pretty much the uh, review video of this Pentax Q camera I hope you find it at least informative so I know I have a lot to improve about my video reviews and everything but I'm doing my very best I'm still trying to make more structures and things like that but yeah Thank you very much for watching this video. It's been a pretty long video, I understand. But thank you very much for watching, and have a nice day, and 
have fun shooting. <laughs>